All right, we'll do a quick video of uh, some of the fiberglass projects I've got going on right now. Uh, I just made a, a mold of this scoop uh, from Downright Racing for the Fairmont and thought it would look good on the LTD hood I made. So what I did was I put two layers of floor wax on it. You put one coat on, let it dry, and then put on another coat, let it dry, and then you put on a layer of what's called PVA, and it's basically uh, liquid cellophane right here. So what you do is you just, I just pour it out by about 50 milliliters at a time, brush it on, and it creates a barrier between the gel coat and the part that you're molding. So once that's on there and dry, then you mix up gel coat. And this is a different kind of gel coat I used this time, not very, I didn't really like it. But um, what you, so what you do is you can see the green right there, that's the liquid PVA after it dries and it's colored green so you can see it as you're putting it on unless you use the, uh, neutral color resin then it's kind of difficult to see but so you paint it all on there let it dry or get tacky it doesn't have to be dry completely but then you come in you want to do a, a thin layer of mat first and i use a chop mat because if you use a cloth interwoven it's it's very difficult and well it's basically impossible to try to get these shapes and contours from from the cloth uh, this is this is a cloth right here so as you can see um it, it just it doesn't lay out whereas with the with the chopped strand you can actually work it into the part and it'll contour to the shape so you put you put the first the thinnest layer on first and then you take a, a roller and then you want to roll the bubbles out and it's very important that you get the mat all the way against the back side of the gel coat because that's what holds everything together um, if you don't do that you can get bubbles between the gel coat and your mat and you know it'll be a, a void in in the product so once you get the first layer in um, it's best to start by wiping just painting it the section you're about to do with resin first and then you lay the mat on it and then the mat will absorb it and then you you i take the uh, measuring cup with a paint brush uh, chip brush and then i just dab it in as i go to get it fully saturated and then um typically if i'm lucky enough my wife will help me and she comes behind me and she she'll roll the mat in as I'm going down and brushing in the resin and then once we got the layer in we'll have all our layers cut and laid out and ready to go uh, from thinnest to thickest I usually start with three quarter ounce go to a one ounce and then end with a ounce and a half uh, for your typical parts like this um, so once that's in she's rolled it in you know I'll go ahead and take the next layer put it on there and uh, she'll be able to roll it in uh, to the resin from the other layer for the most part and then I'll come back you know with more resin and then dab it where she needs it and then she'll continue to roll it in as we work all the layers in until it's done uh, a problem I was having recently was was dry time and cure time because if you read the the container of resin it basically says take your hardener and put a safety pin hole in it or something and it's how many square it, it doesn't give you an exact measurement so i found out that it's you use one percent uh is on the bottom end and then two percent is the most hardener to you they recommend using for the for the product to cure properly.
uh, more and it'll dry faster less you know it might never dry but if you can if you get a little bit less sometimes you can get it in the sun and it'll the sun will help it uh, finish curing but um, when I did that steeple it was I went a little light on the hardener but just because it's, it was we put down about two and a half gallons of resin on that thing and um i didn't want it to harden on us and you know get away from us so i mixed it kind of light but um so i made i made this this right here this is the the roller that my wife uses and um basically it just goes in there and gets all the air pockets out and it keeps everything tight uh, I usually get these pool noodles. I go and sell it in the dollar store for like 10 or 15 cent a piece about this time of year. And I added those on and then glassed them in just for some reinforcement to hold for the mold to hold its shape. Uh, this is obviously the hardener for the resin. Make sure you got acetone. This is the uh, floor wax I use. And then I get the gallon jugs local. This is the um, gel coat I use, or I, I bought this time. These are the chip brushes. This is from the, the PVA. I usually reuse those because all these measuring cups and all your consumables get pretty add up, you know, if you're not paying attention. Then it comes with a measuring cup. So, you know, if you do 500 milliliters then you do five milliliters of hardener to have the appropriate mixture i use these uh for getting for separating the part so what i'll do is i'll get it in between after i've done it and just start wedging these wedging these between the part and the mold all the way around and then work work it and then you can you can see it break away and then it'll pop out and then you run some water over it and the water dissolves the uh, PVA and then once you clean the PVA out then you take some acetone wipe it down and then repeat your process you'll do two layers of wax one layer of PVA then your gel coat and then your thickest to thinnest or thinnest to thickest of your mat and then start popping out some parts so let's see this you gotta wear gloves and always keep your scissors handy this is what the the chop mat looks like i think this is um this is a one ounce no this is a 1.5 ounce and then there's the little pool noodles i get to cut in and added some strength so and i'm going to show you one of the parts so this is the scoop i made that popped out of that mold so um i did this one by myself and there's a you can see a couple little little places right there where there's a, a bubble but it won't matter on this because this is going this will end up being my plug so i'll get it how I want it and then shape it in and like I say that won't really matter for for using it as the plug um, for the that's the this is the very first fiberglass bumper I made for these cars as you can see you know that you can see this spot and there's one over there where again this very first one I did I really didn't know what I was doing and didn't get the mat rolled up tight enough to the gel coat and that's what happens when you have bubbles so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it along this line and cut this piece out and then across that line and then i'm gonna put mold that balance and put it in here and then attach it to this so then there'll be a fiberglass bumper with a balance and then a bubble hood for these cars so uh this car is i sold it yesterday but he wanted 
the hood and the bumper with the valance so now i want i really wanted to get that done uh, just to because i really i've been wanting to do it for a while and i think it turned out pretty good um the front's a little different on the fairmont it kind of comes to a point right here whereas the the ltd is more flat and straight across so that'll take a little bit of work to try to sorting that out but overall i don't think it turned out too bad